Well, good morning. Uh, looking forward to moving on, getting ready to try to play Miami. Uh, I think a uh, very talented Miami team who've had their ups and downs similar to uh, kind of with the way we've had our ups and downs this year. Uh, but uh, make no mistake, they've have, they have a lot of very good athletes. They're very talented. And on a given day, they can play with anybody in the country. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us. We've got to try to regroup, correct our mistakes, and uh, see if we can't finish this thing off the right way and lay a foundation for next season. Going into the uh, Virginia game, you knew you, you would have to provide your own energy because of the, the possibility of a small crowd. Uh, I imagine <coughs> Miami may be a similar situation for you. Uh, you know, possibly, but uh, that's that's part of the game. I mean, you've got to be able to motivate yourself to play, and and you got to find some angles and 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 go play. If you're a competitor, you love to play the game, and it's another chance to go compete. Uh, we have not done well historically there at Miami, so there's an opportunity for this team to break that trend, uh, and it's just another chance to get it to play another game. Point going back. Uh, uh, even a, a year ago at, at this stage, uh, I know you were very, very happy about the personality of that team mm -hmm. you know, and the way they reacted after the Duke and the North Carolina losses. Uh, what do you say about the personality of this team this year? Are there Every team is different. Uh, I think that this team is continuing to try to play hard. Uh, I think they want to do well. I think they're frustrated, just like everybody else is, the coaches, the players, the fans. I mean, everybody's frustrated. Uh, other than the, maybe the Clemson game, almost every game this year has been one possession game at the end, and we've, you know, we haven't found a way to get on the right side of enough of them. And, uh, but, but they're all different. You know, last year's group had their own chemistry, and, and, and this year's group is too it's different I don't you know, I don't know any other way to describe it other than to say it's different I don't think that that this group's dysfunctional or anything like that I, I think that it's just different last year too y'all I mean if you look at the Virginia Tech game the Georgia game I mean there were plays made at the end I mean it's, it, you, you yeah, well, you that's, that's football if you watch football yeah. this weekend it's, it's like I've, I've said repeatedly there's a very thin line between winning and losing. And, it, you know, it's, it's making one play at the end or making – I mean, there's a zillion plays. We run the, the first play when we get down on their side of the field. I think we make about six or seven yards to the B back. And nobody's going to see that. But if we're on track a little better and we clear, that game over. That's a touchdown. We're this far off track and the guy gets him by the foot. Last year we would have been on track. The guy wouldn't have got him on the foot, and it would have been either a touchdown or down to the ten yard line. Game over. You, you know, so it's like uh, there's all kinds of those things, and that's the difference. The, the fine line, you know, you get a break before they score a touchdown, or you get a call, or you they, you know, you get a turnover. We don't turn the ball over. Uh, you know, that's the things that that are disappointing this year. It seems like whatever has had a chance to go wrong, go wrong, goes wrong. And I think you make your own breaks. I'm not crying about that. We, we've got to do a better job of doing the detail things to make our own breaks. You were uh, shorthanded Thursday night at the, at the ta defensive tackle position. How did you think they, those guys held up? I thought they did uh, played OK. You know, I mean, we, we played fairly well in the second half for time. Uh, we're probably still not as good against the run as I'd like to be. Um, we're not as good running the ball as I'd like to be for sure. This is, uh, but uh, you know, their running back had a hundred and what thirty yards or something. Uh, but I thought that we gave ourselves a chance to stay in the game defensively, you know, by keeping points off the board in the second half. And you know, if you don't turn the ball over the and the. I guess it was the fourth quarter going down the first turnover. You know, we're down in field goal range already. Uh, it was just an unfortunate play. We don't do a very good job blocking on the perimeter or sealing the inside, and he tried to split a guy and fumble. You know, you got to take better care of it, but it happens. They play, that's, you know. Uh, 
the next fumble was just a zone give, and we don't get a guy cut off, but you got to can't fumble the ball, you know. This is a called handoff, and when you do those things, you're you're not going to win very many games. Or when you don't snap the ball on third and one, I mean the snap was on first sound, and you don't snap it, and everybody thinks the left guard's an idiot for jumping off sides. Well, he was the guy going on the snap count, you know. So it's just there's all kinds of things. My wife, it's 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 great. Even your own wife, she had a great perception. She's. She asked me after the game, she goes, on third down and long, how come you hand it up the middle? <laughs> because she doesn't know. And, and it's a blitz check. And we've got, if you could see the film, but you got to do it right. You know, you're supposed to turn out on the back side, and we don't turn out, and the guy comes across the face. But if you turn out, it's a touchdown, and people are going, wow, what a brilliant call on third and 12. You know, that's the thin line between – Winning and losing, and I get it. I mean, she's the biggest fan we got, right? She don't know why we handed off on third and twelve. So there's always more to it than meets the eye, most of the time. How how has uh, Justin uh, handled this season and handled the uh, the inconsistencies, I guess, on the offense? I, I think he's handled it okay. I mean, he's been inconsistent himself. So it's like I think he's frustrated like everybody else, and I think he's beat up physically. Uh, he's really a tough guy. I mean, he's physically a tough guy. And uh, I think that, that it would be fair to say that everybody's frustrated, you, you know, especially if you're not used to this. And I don't think he is, and I'm not, and I doubt very many of our guys are, you know. Uh, Sometimes it's it's a valuable lesson in that you learn that winning is not easy. Sometimes you take it for granted, and and it's not easy. It's never easy. So, but I think he's handled it about as well as you could handle it, probably. He's a very competitive guy himself. Yeah. At this point, do you change anything about how you? Rotate guys, or do you push like say defensive guys to play some younger, younger guys more snaps at, at this point? No, I think what you try to do is you try to do. You, I'm going to try to win the game on Saturday. I'm going to do everything I can to to try to win the game. I think that guys earn playing time, and if guys earn the, the time, then you know they get to play by by how they perform. I fully intended to try to play Matthew Jordan on Thursday. And the situation just never presented itself that I felt like there was a time to, to put him in. I mean, uh, again, there wasn't very many possessions. And especially when you fumble them away on the first play and the second play, you know, basically you're instead of playing nine or ten, you're playing with seven. So we ran 60 plays. So there wasn't a lot of uh, – a lot of time, you know, I'd like to get him in the game at some point. Uh, but I hesitate to say, OK, I'm going to put a guy in on the third series. Because as sure as you do, the ball will be on your one yard line or or something happens. And I don't want to put him in a bad spot when he goes out there to play. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully he can play. Uh, Justin's been, you know, taking a lot of physical shots. It would help him, I think. Uh, I think you, you try to play guys who give you the best chance to win. That's what we're trying to do. If you had Tim this year throughout the stretch, do you think it would have made a difference? I I mean, Justin's really beat up, like I think a lot more than people probably realize physically. Yeah, I think that was a critical injury when Tim Byerly got hurt. It, take, t it took away – Basically, for lack of a better term, a package that we like to run with him, like, you know, goal line and follow plays and stuff that he was really good at, it kind of took it away. And in hindsight, looking back, we probably should have had Matthew Jordan do some of that. But again, he was a red shirt freshman. And at the time, we moved him from A back, back to court, you know. Uh, but yeah, there's no question we missed Tim Byerly. Not only from that, he's a good leader. He's a big part of the team. So yeah, that was a that was a critical injury. 
It affected several positions too. 